Welcome to Game. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Live. I, should, I feel like I should be talking to Skip. Hey Skip, and welcome to GT Live. We've missed you over the last couple of days, buddy. Hey. His head is just right on top of your head. Right, legitimately right in the middle of the frame as we speak. Oh, good. Uh, so, hey, welcome. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for hanging out this Thursday afternoon. Uh, today we wanted to do something a little bit different. We're playing a game, but we're playing a game that I think a lot of us has played for many a year in our life. Would you rather? Many a year. <laughs> for us, for us old folks, you know, would you rather? But, but uh, not just any would you it, like. Uh, there are plenty of kind of like flash games and, and online games where you play. Would you rather? And I noticed actually that uh, Mark Markiplier did this early, like he uploaded a video about the same thing earlier today, the same game, so. Oh really? Oh, we should compare answers afterwards. Right, but yeah. He beat us to it. He, he beat it, he completed it. I don't think, no, I don't he think. he beat us to it. Oh, he beat us to it, yeah. So, great minds clearly think alike. Great minds think for themselves. Thanks, One Saturday Morning. I know, right? Does Got it, that 90s throwback reference. I was gonna yeah. say, who's old enough to remember One Saturday Morning? I, I am. Woo -woo. Recess was the was the show that, or Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann. Were you, okay. I know, I was Recess. Wait, I was okay, recess. Since, since we're starting on Would You Rather, were you a Recess girl or a Pepper Ann gal? I was a Recess gal all the way. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Rather yeah, Recess, than Pepper Ann? Recess was great. It had it had way more characters, and Pepper Ann was just, she was like so clumsy, it kind of stressed me out. Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, way too cool for seventh grade. Pepper Ann, she's like one in a million. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so anyway, for those of you who don't know that, that was a, a just like a Saturday morning block of cartoons that was awesome. On ABC, it was fun. But that being said, today's all about getting our, we're gonna, we're gonna have a little deadlock here. It's going to be like an unofficial deadlock where oh, we man. debate questions that get served up to us, questions that you guys submit. You guys are going to debate them in the comments and on Twitter, and we'll come to conclusions and see how we match with the general populace. There's so much pressure right now. No pressure, guys. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of love for, for the recess, by the way. So already, question one, recess. Yeah, Recess is definitely the way to go. I yeah. agree. I agree. Pepper Ann was cool, but she was a bit too awkward for my taste. She's, I mean, I don't have a problem with awkward. Did you know the I creator of Pepper awkward. Ann? The, the person who originally designed the cartoon. Yeah, my dad knew her. Yeah, right? So connected. My dad knew someone who once designed a mid-90s cartoon character. Really popular <laughs> mid-90s cartoon character. That's awesome. Stephanie is legit, by the way. So legit. Okay, so. Uh, what? I thought we were gonna play. Well, no, real quick, <laughs> one one other question that I have to update you guys on. Uh, I asked you guys via Twitter just to kind of like tease this episode going live. I asked you guys, would you rather give up YouTube for life or give up video games for life? Oh my goodness. Steph, prediction on who won? I think, I think most of the audience probably started playing video games before they started watching YouTube. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with people would give up YouTube before they would give up video games because video games are like a more core part of like who they are growing up. Well, you're right. Good. Hey, well, well done, well done. Yeah. It was a 70, I believe it was a 70, it was about like a 75, 25 split. Okay. As far as giving up YouTube 75% versus giving up video games, which was 25%. At this point in my life though, well, one, like we work on YouTube, so like I couldn't give up YouTube. That would be really strange. But you do a gaming show on YouTube, so if you gave up video games, you couldn't do the YouTube but show anymore. But the thing anymore. is, like, I do so much research about the games, like by reading forum posts, watching other people play, things like... Yeah, but you couldn't watch YouTube. Oh, wait, you could watch no, YouTube. No, I, okay. I could watch YouTube. So like if I... Like just the other day, I was I was uh, you know watching a bunch of like live streams of Fallout. Oh yeah, and it's like it's great. So you know, that would be a really hard one for me at this point. I re I enjoy watching YouTube just as much as I enjoy play vi playing video games. Whoa, be and it's not just video games, but I also watch like you know top ten lists. I watch non video game related content. Uh, you know, watch Mojo stuff a bunch, comedy channels, like... A lot of Honest Trailers. Yeah, Honest Trailers and Screen Junkies and Cinema Sins and stuff, so like... Yeah. It's a big part of my entertain... Like, I would be giving up a lot of just, like, my video watching entertainment. It's a tough no. call. 
So that's okay. it. So anyway, uh, we're gonna start in. Jason, will you pull up the game, sir? Yeah. My good man. Uh, so vote. So we're gonna pull up the first question. Vote along in the comments. Stephanie is hopping in the comments. Also vote using the hashtag GT Live. Uh, ever if we get one that's particularly per <laughs> if we get one that's particularly divisive, I'll put it up on Twitter just as a poll, so that Ooh. way we can get an official count like and measure it out, right? And see you guys debate it back and forth, and uh, we'll be reading out some of the better logic and reasoning. Cool. So there you go. Are you ready? Let's do it. I didn't hear them respond. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, I think I heard them okay. respond. That might have just been you whispering in my ear. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready. This will be fun. Okay, let's do it. So this is this is a deep dive into our collective psyche okay. about what we value in life. Here we go. Question right. one. Would you rather have a child in seventh grade and raise it or never have kids slash adopt? Okay, what? seventh grade, you are 12. Have a kid in seventh I don't would you rather have a child in seventh grade and raise Oh, like, like having a child are, when you are in you seventh are grade? You are in seventh grade and having a child. Ooh. Easy one for me. Or never have kids. Slash before. adopt. Ooh. Slash adopt. That the thing is, adopting is having kids. No, it's you you could never have oh, a kid or, or adopt. adopt. Oh, I thought it was never have kids or you could adopt. No. Oh. You, you either have a kid like, at how, a really early I was age. Like, how does that not count? Oh man, this is this is heavy. This is like a heavy one to start off with. Would you rather have a kid at a very early age and then raise it or never have kids? I I think this is clear cut for me. What is it? So, I personally think Okay. No, like in seventh grade, I knowing myself, okay. I would not be in a position where I could raise the child appropriately. It would not be fair for me as a seventh grader mm. to raise a kid and, and c commit to raising a kid. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the finances, I wouldn't have the know-how, I wouldn't have the maturity. Oh man, oh and this has gotten so deep. I know, this is so heavy already. This is so serious. So We should have started out with that last dishwasher question. We should have. <laughs> so for me, I feel like I, I like it would be unfair for me to say I'm gonna have a child in the seventh grade and because it says I have to raise it. So I, I would have to forego it. So I just have to say like, if this is my choice, I can never have kids. Man. Which is a bummer. I think, I think I would have to go in this the the same direction because because I'm confused about how how do you how is it possible to raise a kid in in seventh grade? Again, you're 12. Right. You're not legally old enough to hold a job. You're not legally old enough to do anything really, or or even make independent decisions. So like in in a court, like you would have no. Like, this is a world without law, confident. Stephanie. A I world know. without law. I guess I would have. I, I'd have to go the same. I would have to actually agree with you on that one. It's really hard. Like it's it's super sad, but you would. I, I don't think that would be fair to anybody. All right, take take it to the comments. Okay. Also, Jason, real quick question for you, sir. Yes. Uh, would you? Is there? There's. There's. There's no. Would you? Never rather? have kids. I think everyone's pretty much. Yeah, I feel like that. this one is yeah. pretty pretty solid. Man. Real, real quick, Jason. Uh, do we have music going under this one or no? Yes. We do. Cool. Great. All I right. just wanted to make sure because I could see this one being kind this of stagnant. Is so I serious. Have a faint under there. Yeah. yeah, you have a little faint like yeah. undertone. Same that I do. For do, 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 do okay. Great. Do, 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 do. All right. Cool. Oh, nice. All right, so we're gonna so say never have kids. So people are gonna be like, where are the condiments in this one? So do we all agree? We all agree. Okay, never have kids, no yeah. kids. No. It seems like that's pretty solidly no kids. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Wow! 51% never have kids, 49%. Wow, that is so close. We are also doing the exact same thing right now. This is our this is our uh, surprised uh, choke ourselves <laughs> face. Apparently. I just looked over. I was like, "Where's your hand?" <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! I'm really surprised that it's that evenly divided. I am too. Right? That's mm -hmm. shocking. That's I mean, giving up kids is really serious. Yeah, it's it's huge. So I I mean, it's it's a big decision, but I didn't think it would be that close. I didn't think so either. So. All right, so, but, have it. but in, in the interest of the game that we're playing, we match the popular answer. Yeah, we did. Which I don't know, is, is that a good thing or a I bad thing? Know. But like, hey, we're in with the in crowd. We all agree. We all, we're, we're on the same page. Wish that I could be part the, of the, the cool kids. The part of the what, online majority. Because <laughs> <laughs> the majority is 
Not the my, what? I don't know. I don't know. Those are good numbers too. Like yeah, that's yeah. a good poll. It's a that's high end. Yeah, that is a huge. That's a million votes right there. Yeah. So that's impressive. Okay, moving on. Okay, next. Next. Okay. Would you rather only <laughs> talk in the third person? So it would be like Matthew feels hungry right now. <laughs> Matt Pat would like to pet Skip. Uh, Matt Pat loves you. You know, <laughs> Matt Pat. I tolerate, or Matt Pat tolerates you, Jason. Uh, or never be able to call someone by name. Oh. Okay. Would, would you rather only talk in the third person or never be able to call someone by name? I'm gonna go never call somebody by name. Why? I am. Because, <laughs> because in all honesty, I am terrible at remembering names. I'm so bad at it, and I, I constantly. Uh, you. No, no, it's, uh, it's Jay, so bad. J it's Jared? Jimmy. J it's Jimmy, right? But you get really good. At <laughs> Hashtag blame Jimmy. At talking at around talking it. Around it, right? See, that's I do the, the thing. Same thing. I barely ever call anybody a name to their face. Jason has no idea what my name is, so. It's true. Yeah. Um. So, so I feel like since I'm already so bad at remembering people's names, and I'm not one of those people who like you shake hands and it's like, oh hi, I'm Bob, and I'm like, hi Bob. I'll I'll remember your name because I'm repeating it, Bob, and all that stuff. Yeah. Like those those like tricks that you're supposed to do. I always forget. To you're do not those, coming so. up with mnemonic devices, no, as in like Bob that rhymes with Rob, who's wearing red right now, so it's Red Rob Bob. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a mnemonic device wow, of some much, form. It seems to be much more split. I'm seeing a lot of third person. So which way do you go? See, okay, so only talking in the third person. I, the thing is, the rest of the world has no clue what the heck's wrong with you. Yeah, right? that's the thing. And so if you went around, like think about going to a job interview mm. and it's like, so tell me about your skills. And and it's like, well, Matt Pat created a YouTube video uh, a couple years ago and Matt Pat was able to generate 5 million subscribers. Like how pretentious do do you <laughs> think that sounds? So and I, I and think the person could. on the other end is like, you're weird. You could get around it by just chopping off whatever noun you would like, whether it's a pronoun or your own name. Instead of Matt Pat created a YouTube channel, it would be like, what do you do? Created a YouTube channel. It, de and it depends on how the question's asked, though. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. Born in North Carolina, went to uh, went to college and grad school. Work at a job now. <laughs> right? See, but that's the thing. But see, that's the thing. You're dropping off a noun in every sentence. And you so just kind of like think... replace it with a shrug or something. Yeah, but then you, then you come off as like this weird aloof person or what? Like, I don't think, I don't think that there's a way that you could really like glide through like, whereas never being able to call someone by their name, you can come up with like cool nicknames for everyone. So it's like, Hey, Steph. So introduce hey, yourself. Hey, Buckaroo. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, oh, uh, hey, Moonchild. You know. You're gonna have what? to do better than that. <laughs> no, but okay. Uh, fun. Maybe you should pick the only talk. No, first. fun. Fun fact. I will say this. Fun fact. Uh, when I first met people, Ooh, I love. Hold on. I love this. I love this solution. William Aristea said, change your name to I. Oh! <laughs> Brilliant! That's really smart. That is, that's good. William Arist Aristea, Aristea. 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 you have broken the system and have just shattered everything. Um, no, but fun fact, I used to, when I first met people, in like social settings, or not social settings, but like when I, like in a classroom, or like I would go to summer school a lot over uh, in high school. Flunking out, gosh. Not because I was flunking <laughs> out, but because I wanted to overachieve. Um, yay, yeah, I know, right. Uh, I'm the worst. Or, oh, but you could hey. call everyone dude. Yeah, you, you could, but can I can I tell my cool story? Actually, Stephanie? Ramirez had that to add, had something to add to that. Good, Omar, I, I'm happy for you. Uh, no, no, it's no, but it, but it's true. Like so, so when I would first meet people in uh, in the summer school program, knowing that I would spend the next couple months with them, to like come up with like a quick solidarity thing or like a quick like, hey, we're all in this together sort of idea, I would ask people, hey, if you could have a nickname in your life, what would it be? And they would come up with their own nickname, um, and then and then from there for the rest of the summer, I would just call them by their nickname. That's and so it was an easy way to remember people immediately, because again, like you meet people for the summer, you're really closely entwined, and then you like kind of move away. 
So everyone just operated, and one of them was, um, not Moonface, not Moonchild, but it was like Audio Science or something. Like, someone wanted to go by Audio Science. I'm like, okay, cool. Audio Science it is. So, I agree with that. Oh no! Bring back the game, Jason! Jason! Oh, it's, it's re, the HDMI is reconnecting. Okay! Is that what it? I think okay. so. So here we go. Yeah, We're gonna one. never be able to call someone by their name. What? Wow. No! That seems crazy. That seems crazy. Really? 53% only talk in the third person. And again, it's a million votes. I All am right. so surprised. Next. All right. But so we're in the, the minority. That's okay. The minority prefer Doherty. It's a, not it. It's well, the majority prefer Doherty. Don't worry go, about it. Go. Would you rather never have to grocery shop again? Oh. Oh, 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 I like this one. Oh, this is so easy. Or never have to do laundry this again. This is so easy. Is it? Never have to do laundry. Hate laundry. Laundry is the worst. Really? Yeah, it's not, you never wash your clothes again. It's just you never have to do it yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have oh. you have oh. a personal shopper to do one of these things. Which are they do, or personal shopper or personal maid, I guess, to do one of so these things. They're not doing, they're not like, so if you look at it from the one hand, I guess you could say like, oh, you get free food for life or something like that, is that? Is that the argument to be made for the left? For I think yeah, you're still I think paying, you're paying for, for it. it. I, you're paying for the grocery. You just right. don't have to go to the store and do it. Oh, oh, so easy. Laundry, laundry all the way. You don't understand. Girls have such complicated clothes systems. This is true. There are so many like, okay, okay, you got you got stuff that's made out of normal material, and then you got stuff that's made out of like crazy material, and it's like that can't go in the washing machine, and that can't go in. That one's got to be washed on cold, and that one's got to be washed in only like. 52 degrees Fahrenheit water, and then you can't add the right detergent, and then there's bleach, and then there's fabric softener. There's way too much going on with laundry. It's so hard. So tell me how you really feel. <laughs> it's so hard. You know, for me, it's a tough one because I really, laundry, re laundry. It's, it's laundry. Wins. I really, really don't like going to the grocery store. I really don't. It takes so long. There are so many items there, and I like, for me, it's overwhelming because it's like, I have to make all these choices, and there are so many choices to be had, and, and like, I get tight, like, going to the grocery store is like just mentally demanding for me. Whereas laundry, whereas laundry, and, and the other thing is too, sometimes you have to grocery shop multiple times in a week, depending on how much food you got. Uh, or you, or it's called Costco, man. Go. You run out of food. What? Any number of. Things. All I need are like twelve pizza crusts and like eight pounds of mozzarella. What? That? That's. I'm. I'm eating for a month. Whereas laundry. Whereas laundry. And I'm gonna petition you guys. Whereas laundry. You set it in the in the washer, and then you go do something else. And then an hour later, you come back, you pick it up, you shift it to the dryer, you go off again, it does, you watch a TV show, you play a game, you do some work, whatever, come back, grab the laundry, and you fold it, and it's done. Bada bing, bada boom, it's done. You have to, like, remember it. You have to fold it. Oh my gosh. Remember it? It's got a so siren nice. that lets you know. <laughs> Not a siren. That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, Your wow. laundry is done. The laundry is complete. <laughs> Hold on, guys. No, oh. See, uh, Prologue says, I love grocery shopping. It's fun. Anyone else? Yes, I actually enjoy grocery shopping because you find stuff that's new and you get to try new things and like discover the new stuff that's there. Carter Morgan says, you could just make a list of what you need for a week. Yeah, you don't have to go to the grocery store multiple times. No laundry, no laundry. Okay, okay. I'll concede defeat on this no one, laundry. actually. Yep. Notice me. I'll concede defeat. I I get the idea of wanting to... See, but the other thing, too, is grocery shopping you do on a weekly basis. Are you doing laundry every week? No. A yes. lot of... Yes. <laughs> you should be. Where, <laughs> where are your clothes going? <laughs> You must just have way more clothes yeah. than everybody else. Yeah, we need to do laundry every week. <laughs> Never do laundry again. You must just... Yeah, laundry is the worst, right we, guys? We can't all have such extensive wardrobes that get us through months with no laundry. Or just wear a pair of Jeez. underwear for like a week. <laughs> 
Oh, that would oh that would be so awful. Oh, oh that yeah, would, that, that would be, be so awful. God, yeah, right. <sighs> so never do laundry Aww. again seems to be the consensus. Let's go to yeah. it. Yeah. See? Ah, oh, 69%. Never do laundry again versus 31%. Never go to the grocery <sighs> store. Okay. Oh so I gosh. I was the loser in that one. I concede defeat. That's fine. See, <laughs> there we go. Actually, you know, a lot of people are like <laughs> Everyone <laughs> thinks you're really gross. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm gross in the Ever, chat. No one thinks you ever do your laundry, apparently. Amy the Internet Hobbit says, that's nasty, Mad Pat. Faye, Faye Salad also says, that's gross. Oh my gosh, that, so many. That would be unbelievable. Daniel gross. Bab, ooh, Casey Brodsky, <laughs> ugh. Ethan Newson noticed me. Hashtag smelly cat. Yeah. The smelly cat. <laughs> that would be. Smelly cat, smelly cat. <laughs> What are you? That would be unbelievable. Please, please, go by, please go by that now. Okay. Please go by that now. Okay. Well, if only this question were true in life. Okay, here we go. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> you have broken the law, Stephanie. Oh. You have broken the law. What have, what have you done to break the law? Um, I've burgled. <laughs> <laughs> So Stephanie has just burgled. What did you burgle? Um. Uh. In my in my life, if we're gonna be real about this, I probably stole a bunch of tea or something. Okay, so Stephanie has burgled some tea. Real mastermind of crime right here. Criminal mastermind, Stephanie. Ah, oh, the Earl Grey is all mine. <laughs> I'm trying to think like the rooibos robber. Rooibos. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Would you rather spend five years in prison but return to your old life with no ill consequences? Ooh. Or never go to prison but move every year for the rest of your life? Doesn't say how oh, far you have to move. I know which one you choose. Oh, you do? I absolutely know which one Stephanie chooses in yep. this case. It's, it's move every year because I would move every year anyway. Probably. Stephanie has a thing about staying in one place for too long. Oh yeah. I, I, lo I, I like, I want to move all the time basically. Well, and it's also one of your life goals to yeah. travel the world. My life goal is to visit 100 countries in my lifetime. So, this and would just give you... That would give me the kick in the pants that I need to keep moving down the list. Yeah, that would, that's that's my life goal right okay, there. Let, there we go. But, but let me challenge you. And I just got away with burgling tea. Yeah, man. Right? When you put it that way, it makes that tea burglary so worth it. And she so can worth smuggle it. it into new places now as well. But don't it's you true. but don't you think okay. I'm I'm gonna question you on this, Steph. I'm gonna push you and see how you feel about this. Like okay. have you really thought through the consequences of your of your decision? Because moving Every year for the rest of your life, you're now 80 years old, Stephanie. Are you really gonna want to move to a new place when you're 80? When I'm when 80, you're 90? I'm, I'm moving from the nursing home room that I'm in now to the nursing home room next door. I don't. I, it doesn't. It doesn't specify Jay, how far you have to move. Jason, doesn't, I don't know. Well, let's toss it to Jason say. for the official rules here. Is that? I I am skeptical. It doesn't I would say. say probably you, to a new nursing home. I, no, I, I'm gonna Not say just a room. New city. New city. New city. Yep. That's Still. Not that hard. Okay. New, wait, new city? Yeah, new city. No, it's the, new si the question no. doesn't Let's say that. We we're this, stipulating so. new city. Even if it is a new city. How much stuff does she have that needs to be moved? Really, she's I, just an old lady going. From I know. One place it's to just me place. and my. It's just me and my walker. Yeah, maybe All I've got is my walk, two, my walker, tea. couple of tennis some balls, tea. my my teacups that I've stolen methodically over the years. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about this Earl Grey. I burgled this years ago. <laughs> I have to side with Steph on this, yep. too. I would move every year. You would move every year? What about you? Would you sit in prison for five years? No. I mean, I would, I, move. Hear... I would move every year. 100%. See, I know they offer some really good art classes now, but I, I've seen enough Orange is the New Black to know that I don't want to be there for five years. Five years is a really, a really long it time. a lot. Yep. And if I'm burgling tea... And and I can maintain my reputation as the great tea burglar. The Boston tea burglar. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Love it. I remember the day 
Please. So okay, what's what's the vote? What's the chat say? What's Twitter say? Um, what's the vote on Twitter? The vote on Twitter. Yeah. Oh boy. I feel like we. People are saying five years. Really? Yeah, a lot of people I mean, are. Okay, here's the thing, and and again, going to the consequences of your decision, I can see this being a challenge. Again, if you have a kid, if you have a child. Now all of a sudden you're forcing them to move every like they're never gonna have like a steady friend base. Yeah. That Jason's like, uh, kids. Well, no, I I'm already not having any kids. We made that decision three questions ago. <laughs> so So no, okay, so wait, you're you're thinking about kids. Never girls. go to prison, never go to prison, never go to prison. Steph is right, we need to op uh, op we need new experiences. <laughs> we need open areas and new experiences. Yep, says, All right. at Samuel Carroll 12. You're also doing a good job of keeping the prison overflow rates low. Exactly, keeping keeping people out of prison at uh, Noctali23 says, why not visit Belgium sometime? I would love to visit Belgium GT, GT Live fan number 5328. Awesome, uh, with a giant pumpkin head, actually says, you just burgled, would you rather steal tea or Matt Pat's smelly clothes? I don't know, I, if, if the showers- Matt Pat's <laughs> smelly clothes, smelly Pat, smelly Pat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are you stinky? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's gotta be tea for me, but maybe there's a market somewhere for, for some, some stinky clothes, gosh. Shou showering, so so important. Wash. All right, laundry. See, this is why I feel so strongly about laundry. I'm doing, I'm in there doing laundry all the time. Okay, yeah. never go to prison, but move every year of your life is a consensus. Let's say, yeah. wow, wow, wow. For, this is a big split. Forty-five, people fifty-five. People are so lazy, man. Move, move. No, <laughs> people. I mean, I will say this: moving takes a lot of time. It's pretty stressful. I know. Yeah. It, I, so, so I mean, if you were really going to execute this strategy, what you would need to do is be one of those people who can basically live in like a one-room apartment, and so you just pack up everything you own into your car. That's and, it. And I, mean, I will say this: when I was touring around in theater as, as an actor and, and director, one of the things, like, I moved around every couple months, and I was basically living out of a suitcase. And I lived in Tennessee, West Virginia, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, like all over. Uh, New York, so like five different states. It was hard, like moving to it, not having stability and moving to a new place every time was really hard. That being said though, here, presumably you could still get married and stuff, so you would have someone coming with you, which was a big, like, I was moving alone, so that made it really hard. I was meeting new cast members all the time, so that made it hard. The other thing that made it hard was it was every couple months instead of every year. Mm. I think having a year in a place gives you enough time to kind of get settled, get comfortable, but then move on. Like, that is spaced out enough that I think it would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was, so a, that that was a good one. That I like good. that one. Okay. And at Snorf08 said, that's where my tea went. Yes, it is. <laughs> How dare you steal Snorp? Steal <laughs> Snorp? How dare you steal Snorp's tea? <laughs> I was trying to think of another S word. Uh, Somebody just saw your Porygon. Oh, my Porygon shirt? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not one of my shirts. Well, yeah, this is from yeah, the Dex. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a Dex shirt, National you're, Dex. You're sporting all kinds of YouTuber t-shirts lately. This is. Yesterday I was wearing my new FNAF shirt. Today I'm wearing Alex and uh, Kelly's uh, Dex shirt. Yeah, that's awesome. Tomorrow that's I might wear shirt. my new Mario is Mental shirt. Mm. We'll see. For Scary Game Fridays. Ooh, 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 this is a good one. This is a good one. Ooh. Okay, would you rather own a lightsaber or know the ways of the force. This is another easy one, I think. Which, which, where are you? Clearly it's know the ways of the force. It, it clearly is. It clearly is okay. know the ways of the force. There so, is no contest. It's def for me, it's definitely know the ways of the force because you can do stuff without a lightsaber. You can do all kinds of stuff. But just to play devil's advocate, owning a lightsaber would be pretty cool. It's clearly physics that has not been discovered yet. It would immediately make you or the most- it? That sounds like an episode of Film Theory. Oh my goodness. Star Wars month. It's coming up. Actually, it's not that. Uh, actually, it might, it, may, it, uh, it, it might be coming up. I'm, we're working, we're researching it now. Anyway, sorry. Yep, so, owning, but owning a lightsaber would be awesome. You would automatically be super influential and super rich, like if you owned a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. 
But then if you, knew, you? if you knew the ways of the force, you could just convince anyone of anything you wanted. Right. So you'd probably still be both of those. Yeah, things. so. And you can shoot lightning. Right, like that's the thing. Who own a lightsaber. Light oh, yeah. I a, see. Jason's on the dark side. <laughs> yeah. Own, okay, yeah, no, I agree 100%. Own a lightsaber. It's cool in theory. It's a very cool device. But what can you really do with it? Nothing. You're, you're not going to go around Especially mowing people. Especially if you're not hand. trained. A lot of people would just cut themselves. And, yeah, yeah, either either cut themselves off and like what Anakin are you, Skywalker themselves. Or what, or what are you doing? You're pulling an Undertale and going around and like just slaughtering masses. Like that's not useful. Like I can use it as a can opener. Great. That does nothing. Knowing the ways of the force, I'm force throwing you. I'm, I'm force spitting right now, Ooh, apparently. You were. I'm force throwing you. I'm force mind controlling you. I'm force lightning -ing, lightning -ing, lightning -ing, lightning -ing, lightning -ing. you. There's no contest. No, everybody, everybody's for. Force and you jump turn into it. a ghost later on. Yeah, and you yeah. become a ghost after the, after you're dead, <laughs> or after you re-enter the the force. Done. Yeah. yeah. Seventy-eight percent to twenty-two percent. Easy. Well done. Yeah. Boom. Next. Flying. Bada bing, bada boom. Would you rather constantly have wrinkled clothes? Or never have toothpaste. God, more laundry. Right? A lot of like, a lot of like, clean hygiene questions we're getting here. Where are you? Where do you land? Oh, this is a no-brainer too, right? What? Like, I wouldn't. I would rather constantly have wrinkled clothes. And have rather than never teeth. have tooth. I want like, good teeth. Is so important. I like, already know he doesn't wash his clothes. So. Yeah, I don't wash the clothes, so why would I care if they're wrinkled or not? Plus, don't even we, kid about a thing like that. It's so gross. Anyway, <laughs> plus, 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 plus. We live in 2015, where ironing of clothes is less a thing now than it was even like a decade ago. But it doesn't say you can't iron your clothes. It says constantly have yeah. wrinkled clothes. See, 2015, the technology that we have now helps us have clothes that come out of the dryer naturally not wrinkled. Oh, but oh, but oh, okay. this is saying that d no matter what you do or what kind of clothes you buy, they will always be wrinkled. Always. Whereas if this were my choice, I would actually opt to never have toothpaste. No. And then I would take baking soda out of the refrigerator and create my own toothpaste. No. And wait, combine no, you, it no. and combine it with scope and Ooh, scope. and whitening rinse and all the other stuff that does exactly the same thing. And I would floss religiously. And so it would be I would I would be able to probably eliminate more bacteria from my mouth by using a combination of baking soda, various mouthwashes, and strong flossing technique than I would with toothpaste anyway. Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie, vigorous flosser. You know, okay, first off, I have to challenge your assertion that you would take bicarbonate. Baking soda, yeah. And and make toothpaste. You Our, just said you would make toothpaste when you have agreed to never have toothpaste. Doesn't matter, you, say, you can't have toothpaste. You cannot have a tooth cleaning agent outside of mouthwash. You could do mouthwash, you could do floss, you could do a toothbrush sans toothpaste, but you cannot <laughs> have toothpaste. Can I, can I just like, pour some powder in my mouth and then pour some water in and kind of like shake No, it? you're creating and then brush it? like. Well, yeah, I can. Actually, you could. As I can. No, you can't because you're brushing it. It's as long as it's not a paste. Okay, I'll make it watery. I'll make it waterier than a paste. It'll let's, be let's, a liquid. Let's go to the comments on this one. I'm here. <laughs> this is this is a hard one. I'm curious. I am very curious. Okay. Let's let's, let's scroll see. down. Let's see what people are saying. Okay. Vigorous floss. Okay, a lot of people tooth gel. No. No? Uh, that, that, that no, that's paste. paste. That counts paste. as paste. Paste. A lot of people are saying wrinkled clothes. I think people are with you. I think I, I, I you guys are right. Because, like, the thing is, you know. There are so many agents out there for cleaning your teeth. And then, on top of that, you can still go to the dentist and get, like, whitening treatments and stuff. There's all kinds of things you can yeah, do. Yeah, but tooth, or, sorry, mouthwash can only get your mouth so clean. 
Is that, well, yeah, it gets, that's why you use it in addition to toothpaste, because it does yeah. more than toothpaste. In addition to toothpaste. But now if you're cutting out toothpaste out of the equation, your mouth is inherently not as clean as it should be. You just so, brush with goodbye the kisses, goodbye, like, uh, beautiful, healthy teeth, hello cavities, hello golden dentures. I don't think so. No, I think your teeth would, might end up just, like, I think they might end up healthier. Actually. Because you have, because you're forcing yourself to. Because you are flossing, and you're you're also you don't you don't lose your toothbrush. All like you you give your like toothbrush a really good dip in like a, a bunch of astringent scope, okay. and you brush like you normally <laughs> would. Oh, copy two, four two seven says you could have mints, Matt. Uh, Johnny Bebby, wait, I miss Johnny Bebby. Johnny Bebby, I miss Johnny Bebby. Oh, uh, that's all right. Okay. Shoot. Uh, seismic are, media, Matt, oh, Matt laying down the wall. Yeah, because we're creating rules here that Kobe need to be followed. says there are other ways of cleaning teeth. Here, you click on your constantly hovering clothes. Okay, constantly hovering clothes. I think the chat agrees with you. Great. Oh, no contest! Okay, everyone lacks creativity. 81%! Maybe Boom! You just aren't bothered by your wrinkles. I think that's what it is. I, I think know. in the world, like, wrinkled clothing is, you know, like, yeah. All right, like, fine. there are so many, I'd rather take care of my body than I'd rather take care of, like, you know, the things that I could permanently lose rather than clothes, <laughs> which, like, eh. <gasps> what? I, fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you rather be famous for curing cancer, be famous for making everyone on Earth live forever? Oh, this Ooh. is another no contest. Oh, really? Which one 100%. is it? 100%. Which one? Be famous for curing cancer. <sighs> yeah. So because you have cured one of the like most like difficult to cure if everyone, ailments to the human body. If everyone lives forever though, you've cured everything. True. So the th so my issue with this is is yeah. Is that being famous for curing cancer, you're always going to be a hero. If you're famous for making everyone live forever, the, a lot of you will be more famous. You'll actually be much more famous. But you might also be infamous because some people don't want to live forever. Ah, the power. Right, <laughs> you, yeah, I, I agree 100%. You've suddenly made everyone live forever who might not want to, depending on like what age they are, you know, if like a yeah. lot of people. Maybe you just keep aging. A 200 year old looks right or a rough around the Or if you're gonna just keep coming. Right, the or year. that, see, that's my big thing. So, first off, if you're sick, and you're forced to live forever, like you can still be sick forever. Yeah. S secondly, is exactly what you just said, which is if everyone on earth lives forever, people aren't stopping procreating, my friend. If I'm living forever, you know, that's a lifetime of procreation. Well, not me specifically, but like, you know. Because <laughs> I, because we established not I'm not kids. having kids. <laughs> I cannot have kids. But I'm saying other people who have not made such a crucial sacrifice. All those seventh graders. Right? All those seventh graders who are out God. there going at it and raising kids. Those guys, you know, that's a, all of a sudden, here's a bunch more babies who also live forever. And here's more people that live forever. You have doomed the planet. So you're right. You'll become more famous uh, across the planet. Hey, here's this person who somehow made everyone live forever. But give it a couple years. Say even, I don't even know how long it would. It, it might take like as quick as a hundred years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everyone hates you because you have doomed the planet. Technic and and I mean, even on a psychological level, I think like I think for a lot of people, we're getting we're getting awfully deep now. But I think for a lot of people, like part of that, like go out there, do stuff, have adventures, live your life, is is predicated on the idea that you have like a limited amount of time. So like, hey, use it really well, and then all of a sudden, if you have like forever, it's like. Oh God, like forever, that's so much time to fill. Like I feel like people would, wouldn't would be as like go-getters Netflix, if... man, would make a killing. Oh my gosh. Except they wouldn't because everyone would live forever, but they would make a lot of money because <laughs> everyone would be like, well, I guess I'm just binge watching Friends for the hundredth time. All right, next. Wait, what, what's the chat say? Oh, I want to yeah, say cancer, cancer. Cancer. Everyone says cancer. Everyone's, yeah, everyone's yeah, everyone pro-cancer, there you go. Cancer. And a lot of people are saying, I'm a seventh grader. Well, <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> you be careful. Uh, 66% to 34%. I think that's fairly definitive. I think we all yeah. agree. All right. Cool. Next. Would you rather? <laughs> I love it. Okay. 
Would you rather have your fingers always covered in barbecue sauce or have your fingers always covered in Doritos nacho cheese <laughs> flavoring? <laughs> all of your fingers? Yes, all your fingers. All your, all your fingers have to be covered in one of these two things. I love all this. Your this fingers. is great. <laughs> all your fingers. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> How about you, Jason? Well, Steph, well, Steph ponders. I want the barbecue sauce fingers. I like, want. I want them so bad. I want. <laughs> I want them so bad. Wow. That would I be want, amazing. I want the Doritos nacho cheese. What? Yep. Why? And I, I, lo like I more love people barbecue would be sauce. Upset if you touched them or got them dirty with nacho cheese, then they would if it was barbecue sauce. I disagree 100% with that. Really? Because, yeah, because now because barbecue sauce is sticky and sweet and like and wet and wet. That's whereas, the problem. Whereas Doritos nacho cheese flavoring is dry, so yeah, I'm shaking your hand and it's kind of obnoxious, but for the most part, I can just like brush that off or you know like that's not as destructive. So I would disagree with your reasoning also, there. Also, I agree with barbecue sauce, but I disagree with your think reasoning. Think about every day, think about everyday activities. Think about putting on your clothes, the ones that you occasionally launder. And and you you're trying to do that with fingers covered in barbecue sauce, then everything <laughs> is covered in wet barbecue sauce, but if it's if it's Doritos nacho cheese flavoring, at least it's dry. So you, even if you get like stuff on whatever you touch, you can brush it off as opposed to it being wet and like sinking in. So, okay, this is interesting. The Go cheese ahead. that I imagine when you have your hands covered in like that nacho cheese, that Dorito nacho cheese, those and Cheetos and things like that, yeah. that cheese is not like dry, dusty, yes, it brush is. off. It's, it's pretty like dry. It's pasty on your fingers. No, so that, that's what stuff, are you doing when you eat? That into those clothes. No. That is not No. What, what are you, I, I don't know how you eat chips, buddy, but like you must be doing, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, to me, licking if off barbecue sauce from your finger <laughs> has always been easier than like licking off like nacho, Dorito cheese, that powdery cheese that just turns into this paste when it like mixes with your fingers. I don't know. It's always been paste. I would just also... have like perpetually sweaty hands, Maybe Jason. Yeah. Like... Maybe it's my fingers. Maybe you know. have weird fingers. Remind me not to touch you ever. Also, I think I would get tired of the nacho cheese flavor faster, which means I would put on less weight from all the time I would spend licking my fingers. Aha, uh -huh. so here's where my reasoning comes in. First, <laughs> Point number one, and this is one I want to go to the chat and everyone to, says gloves. Everyone is calling for gloves. gloves. Everyone well, just wear gloves. Number one, number one is barbecue sauce is gonna go with more foods than Doritos nacho cheese flavoring. Barbecue sauce is gonna go with almost any meat. Pretty much any meat. Uh, it's gonna go with a lot of like like it's a good one that you can put on veggies. Um, you know, it, barbecue sauce is just a more versatile flavor than fake nacho cheese flavoring. Don't get me wrong, I like Doritos a lot. I like junk food, you guys know this. But barbecue sauce, if I'm gonna, like, if I have infinite barbecue sauce fingers, I can slather it on my meat, I can slather it on my veggies, and it's so gonna taste good. So you're using whatever residue is on your hands to flavor I, your see, food? Yeah, I, I imagine this as like a, a fountain of, like a perpet, like a, like That's a, what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. Like, like it kind constant of- Constant flow. Yeah, it's like a constant flow. Absolutely. So, so point one is that you just like squeeze your finger to like that or like flavor I, yeah, the grill. Or, like, I brush my finger like like a like a uh, a barbecue brush. I like brush my fingers over it and like more comes. It's like an inkwell kind of like a pen, like a barbecue pen. So anyway, so <laughs> so that's number one. So number one is more versatile flavor. Number two is also more to your point, more calories. So say. I have no money, say I lose everything, <laughs> I will be able to live off of sucking on my fingers, or I will have a, a decent okay meal, or at least some caloric intake by sucking on my fingers. Whereas Doritos nacho cheese flavoring, empty. Empty, it's not giving me the sustenance that I need, but a good barbecue, mmm, oh, oh, done. Done. I've got food. We're, I've got food for life. I win life. Barbecue sauce. What does the chat say? I like this one. Oh this my goodness. To me, it looks pretty split, but right now it looks like Doritos is higher. No. Oh. No. Go to go to Twitter. Twitter. 
Oh no. See Go the back. other thing. Oh, sorry, it, it must be like The argument for Twitter is maybe, maybe you don't want to eat the same thing on every piece of food you ever have for the rest of your life. And you don't have life. to. That's no, when no. you use silverware, Stephanie. Silverware. There's like the the nacho cheese is so much less invasive in the rest of your life. You're not gonna spend all your time eating. You're, I mean, I spend a lot of my time eating, but you're not just not gonna spend all your time eating. You're gonna want to do other stuff. What what if you want to pick up the cat? You want to do that with barbecue sauce all over your hands? No. Nacho cheese is just, it's not gonna spread. So so where your objective is to spread it around, I just wanna keep it from getting on everything. Okay, but with, okay, yeah, barbecue goes with more things, but it's more overpowering than Dorito dust, which will cover everything you're eating. See, but the thing is, I'm not saying it's not overpowering. What I'm saying is that it's, like in those instances where you don't want the barbecue flavor, you don't have to have it. Like, I'm not eating every food with my fingers and I'm not rubbing my fingers over every food. I, I, people have, people have said that I've lost this one. You guys have chosen Doritos nacho cheese flavoring. So, okay. Everyone just says wear gloves. All right, here, everyone says, okay, here we go. Everyone's in the gloves. Wow, I lost this one hard. Air high Wow, 29% to 71. It's okay. You can, you can still enjoy your barbecue sauce. I was really surprised that you picked that one after having to do a spoonful of it during the impossible quiz. Yeah, it was one of the best ones that I had. All right, all, all right, right. All right. Go. I concede defeat. In Pokemon, would you rather pick the Helix fossil or pick the Dome fossil? You don't you don't know. Please translate. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie's never played Pokemon, so uh, it ultimately it depends on uh, which fossil you choose. Re results in which Pokemon you choose. So if you choose uh, the Dome Fossil, you get Kabuto. If you pick the Helix Fossil, you get Omanyte, uh, who evolves into Omastar, and uh, Kabuto evolves into Kabutops. Uh, I mean, just because I love the internet and just because I love memes, I would have to pick Helix Fossil because all hail Lord Helix. Right? Jason doesn't get it. No one, you guys don't get it. You didn't watch Twitch Plays Pokemon. It was Twitch Plays Pokemon. It's a reference. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, pl I, although I will say, when I first played Pokemon, I picked the Dome Fossil because I thought Kabuto looked better. Uh, Omanyte is more of a snail-like creature. Wait, wait, whereas wait. Kabuto I like Did you? Yeah. See, I, I, I think now, if I were to redo it, looking back, I have more appreciation for Omanyte. Uh, Kabuto back in the day, I liked just kind of his like shelled exterior, and I like I thought Kabutops looked really cool mm -hmm. because he's got like his side, like he's got those like scythe hands, and he's got like the the mysterious black eye or like the mysterious like. Oh, black. he's so cool! He, Kabutops is awesome. <laughs> oh yeah! Right, he's he's super cool. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, Kabutops and Kabuto are like, it's an for me it was a more interesting evolutionary tree. Almanite and Almost Star is just like it's a snail and it's a spiny snail. Um. Wait. You. O M A N. O Man Knight. A N I T. -E. Okay. I'll probably pull it up. There yep. you go. Oh no! You gotta go with this guy. Right. He's so cute. He is really cute. Ah, oh, he's the best. I, yeah. I think yeah. Lord. I, I pick Lord Helix. Yeah. No. This is this is clearly the way. To go. Cause cause ultimately I got Kabuto. I got Kabutops. I Look, was, his his little. He was okay. His little guys make like a little mustache. <laughs> it's so cute. Those are his tentacles. He's like, hey. His tentacles are like, he's raising the roof. Yeah. He's, roof. he's like, hey. Helix or dome? All right. Let's go. I also like the word helix better. And it's a cooler fossil. I think helix is winning. There, there helix. is a lot of domes, but helix. it looks like helix is winning. All right, Definitely helix. Is, I think, yeah. All hail Lord Helix. 62 to 80 yeah. 38. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. 90,000 people voted, 55,000 people voted. A lot of people on this site just skipped over that one because they were confused. Aww. They're like, what? What are you talking about? All hail Lord Helix. Here we go, would you rather play, ooh. Oh. oh, this is great. Okay, would you rather play a game of Quidditch in the Harry Potter universe or take a field trip with Miss Frizzle? Oh. Just so everyone knows, so Quidditch is the, the game with the broom, like, Harry I Potter. Would, you're on the internet, so I would assume that you know this, but Quidditch is the Harry the Harry Potter game with the brooms and the bludgers and all that stuff. Field and the feeders, 
and the right. snitch. Right, whereas take a field trip with Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle is the teacher magic who, school who bus. has the magic school bus, which goes into the body, which goes back in time, which goes into outer space, etc., etc. All over the place. Okay. S through the digestive system, mm. into the bloodstream. They follow a Cheeto. They follow, uh, I, believe the they're, I believe they're technically cheese doodles. Oh, fine. <laughs> if, if I remember that episode correctly. They are cheese doodles. They he are. Also, he also eats olives. Arnold in that episode also eats olives. And I was always like, oh, yeah. Arnold, what do you do? Because I felt a personal connection with Arnold in Magic School Bus as like the, the, the nerdy one who was like, oh, that's Arnold. He's weird. And he pines for all the women in his class. That was me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so like I'm like Arnold buddy. I love you But then all and he eats the whoopie pies or whatever, but then he eats the olives and I'm like Arnold This is where you lose me. I'm not an olive guy. I, w I was into olives I, I've always loved olives, so I was actually totally fine with it. I okay, totally fine with that, that being so, so we're not debating Arnold and olives though. Okay. We're debating Quidditch and cool field trip. All right, so this is a no-brainer for me too for for me This is like I look at it on the one hand and I'm like man Harry Potter is so awesome but then I think about my hand-eye coordination, and we get real for a minute. <laughs> and, and we get real. And then I'm like, I could play a game of Quidditch. That would go so badly for me. I would definitely take a field trip with Miss Frizzle, though. Where would you want to go on your field trip? Uh, I actually, when I was little, I wrote a, a magic school bus story of my own about going through the pollination cycle with a bee. Is that the field trip? That, that is would, not the one. I was gonna say. I hope that's. You have the ability to literally do anything, and it's like I'm gonna do the pollination. So that sounds like a really good, uh, a really good, like. They ended episode. up coming out with one the, with the book. Are you kidding? Yeah. Did they, was it your book? It was. They totally stole my idea. Ah. Totally stole it. God. Scholastic. Was that a Scholastic book? I don't know. Scholastic. Don't know. We calling you out. <laughs> we calling you out, Scholastic. Miss Frizzle. Give this girl her credit. Honestly. Royalties. I would go to outer space. I, I, you go to outer space. Where I'm assuming that you would also take the field trip. So it's interesting. While you were talking, I was thinking uh, <laughs> about things that you weren't saying. <laughs> no, no, I'm just giving you our time. So, so I was thinking about it. Clearly, my choice started as Miss Frizzle. Clearly, because mm. it, 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 yeah, it's so cool. Like you can literally go anywhere, do anything. But then I thought about it, and if I'm playing a game of Quidditch, that means I'm existing in a universe where flying brooms are a thing. And that is really cool. Okay, so, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't say live in the world of Harry Potter. It's, it just says, just says play a game of Quidditch. So, a so that- A requirement of that world, though, would be flying broomsticks. You, if I'm gonna play Quidditch, there's gonna be flying broomsticks. Doesn't mean it's Whoops, a magic. That skip. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't mean it's a magic flying broomstick though. Like, technically, science could excited. science could create a world or create you know an arena in which flying broomsticks are a thing, but they're powered by like something else. Still get to fly. Well, okay. So here's here's the. You're other. not living. You, you aren't fly in the magic school bus. Come on. Yep, right on the magic school up. bus. Vehicle again. Like, I think the idea of like flying outside of a contraption is it's really much, appealing to you. Yeah, it's much more appealing than being in you a You go bus to that outer place. space. Jason just, just, just the flying. Jason aspect, just wants to fly. You go to outer space and then they Jason, get out of the bus. Jason is a caged bird who just wants to expand his wings and soar. Don't talk to him about birds. He hates birds. That, I mean, yeah, right. So, okay, I will say this though, and, and this is going back to the point, playing a game of Quidditch, the idea of Quidditch, first off, it could be over in seconds, whereas a field trip with Miss Frizzle could last a really long time, so like, I'm getting a, a pro, because someone could catch the snitch immediately. Willow Lost points out though, a game of Quidditch can go for a really long time, so if you steal the snitch, you can fly away and explore the Harry Potter universe. If I steal the if I steal the snitch, though, the game is over. Willow, the game is over, and, yeah. and the world. But you can steal a broom and just leave. Maybe the <laughs> the, the other thing that I'll say about Quidditch, though, that I always thought was weird, honestly, is the concept you brought up earlier, the bludgers. Like, hey, this is a game in which these really heavy, hard balls are flying around and are gonna try to smack you in the face. That ball. I mean, yes, I reckon. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Captain. O Hashtag Captain Obvious. 
it's dodgeball, great, awesome. But like, that always struck me as weird because you see, you even see it in the movies and in the books. Someone gets hit with a bludger, they get knocked off their broom, they're starting, suddenly suffering from severe injuries, they break their face, whatever. Quidditch is a violent game. So, absolutely taking a field trip with Miss Frizzle. Come on, ride on the magic school bus with Miss Frizzle. Do it. That's my choice. What's, what's the comments say? The comments uh, are actually pretty split. I think it actually goes to Quidditch in the comments. Really? Mm-hmm. Jason, what are you seeing? Yeah. I was seeing a lot of field trip and frizzle at the very beginning. But now... But it seems like, yeah, there was a lot of Quidditch. Well, let's see who won. If it was us or you. Oh, <gasps> Quidditch, 55%. I think, wow. I think the... A lot of people don't know who Miss Frizzle is. That's what I yeah. think. I think if, if more people knew who Miss Frizzle was and how awesome her school bus is, she would have been up there. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Agreed. Um, time is getting tight. Um, okay. We should do a couple more and okay. try and go through them. Okay. Just, like, quick. Okay, break. speed round. All right. Speed, speed round. Here we go. Would you rather speak every language except the language of the country you're currently in? Ooh, that's rough. Ooh. Or speak only the language of the country you're in, but know the meaning of every single word in that language. Whoa! Jeez. Speak only the language of the country you're in. Wait, so, so, okay, so yeah. just to define the rules, if I go to, like, say, okay, I'm sitting in the U.S. Yes. And right now, if I'm in the U.S., I don't know English, but maybe I know German. And then I go to Germany, do I suddenly know English and not know German? Correct. Yes. Correct. I think that's what it is, right? Yes. What yep. the what? You can't communicate with anybody in your country. Right. Or you can be annoyed by everybody in your country that doesn't speak it Okay. <laughs> I think that's what it's saying. You know what I would do, since, since we're trying to answer quickly? Yeah. I would go with speak every language except the language of the country you're currently in, and I would move to Switzerland, where the national languages, I believe, are German and French, but the majority of the population speaks English. Wow. Dead. That is like drop the mic levels of logic there. <laughs> well done. Austria is similar too, I think. I would say a lot of European cities or just are multilingual or are, yeah. are very easy to communicate with people without speaking that one language. Yeah, so you would you yeah. have to you move out of communicate pretty easily. You would have to leave you wouldn't be able to do this in America. Everyone is going red. Yeah, you would have to leave the US because no one in the US speaks other languages. Really? Everyone's going red? Everyone is going red. Really? Yep. Speak only the language of the country you're in but know the meaning of everything. Mm -hmm. See, that's where I see the thing is, I love the idea of knowing every language is really awesome. That's really appealing to me. Somebody said Quebec, also. Good yeah, I was gonna say Quebec. Huh. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot of places in Africa, Europe. Oh wait, wait, wait. So hold on, hold on. Oh. I think, I think the, no, no, no. I think the reason I, I think maybe I misunderstood. So that. much for speed round. Because no, I thought that what I was thinking is for for the red one. I was like, why is everyone choosing red? And I think it's because like if you're in the U.S., you know every word yeah. in the English language. And then if you go to Germany, you Don't know every mean, word in the German, German language. language. You have to you, go it's, red then. It's, you have it's to. It's pretty much max communication. Yeah, that's that's the only lo that's the only logical answer if, no, that's, if not, that's the way it works. I honestly I think you're both misinterpreting the question, so it's the question's fault, but it's speak every language except for the country you're cr you're currently in. Speak only the language of the country you're so we wouldn't be able to speak English, we could speak every other language. Yeah. Right, or speak only English. See, I, I don't think that, this can't be you know every language in every country. Like when you move to a new country, you speak See, that's that. what I was thinking. I was thinking Your logic you is only correct. know English, and so when you go somewhere else, you only know every word right. of English. Yeah. I really like the idea of knowing every language. I'm going this way. Oh. I think people are like, I, I'm, I'm not sure the question's clear enough. I, yeah, I think the question was hard yeah. on this one. Also, it would help, it would help out uh, game theory in Spanish and French. And like, finally, I would be able to have game theory in French and Spanish yeah. and Japanese. Wow. Like, I would not actually. In English. Right, just not in English. Just not in English. That's cool. okay. Building out, building out those international fans. Would you rather have arms in proportion to a T Rex? <laughs> this is great. Or have a neck in proportion to a Brontosaurus? <laughs> oh. Obvious. Go. Brontosaurus. I think so too. I think what? Yeah. Why? I feel like if I had a neck proportionate to a brontosaurus, I wouldn't be able to move around very easy in indoor spaces. 
Like, I hit my head a lot already anyways, and I feel like if I do that, I'm just gonna get clotheslined a lot and things like that. See, I think that the, t the argument for the brontosaurus neck is that if you have T-Rex arms, you're, you're impairing your abilities yeah. to do things, right. whereas if you have a brontosaurus neck, you're not in, like you still have full. You, you still have the ability to do everything you can do now, but now you can also reach like the apple at the top you, of the orchard. But think of it at the it, top you, of the orchard. You are impairing yourself anytime you want to do something that refines your movement. The neck is too long. You, you, would, you would have a hard time getting into cars. You would need to hop into convertibles. That's true. Uh, you would have to like bow down, like you said, bow down, down when you enter like, into doorways. Yeah. This one's pretty split. Plus, I mean, like, my it's not like... Your so arms your are... Your arms are short, that's fine. You still can move your rest of your body, and I'm, like, not huge by no means, so I should be able to still grab things that I want to grab. Ooh, Laura, Laura Rabble po points out something important. Blood flow go going to your head would be really slow. Oh, that is yeah. true. You might not. Good point. You might not actually be able to. To think, live as a yeah. brontosaurus, <laughs> you might choose this and then it happens and then you immediately die because yeah. your heart can't sustain that. That's, that's good, true. That is a fair point. Laura, well, that's a clap and a half. There it is. Nice. Uh, so what's the verdict then? That it's really split. It's really split. What's the verdict for us in the room? We have a T-Rex. We have a brontosaurus. I still think brontosaurus though. Like, assuming your heart could take it, that would be that would be so fun, right? You'd be like, woo, right? <laughs> You'd be like, hey, hey guys, how are you looking? Let's see. <laughs> wow, that's fifty-one forty-nine. Wow. That's close. All right, all right. Two Rex arms though. It's the same. It was the same in the chat. Wow, very split. Impressive. All right. Okay. Next up, this is fun. Yeah. I like this. Would you rather be forced to watch a movie you hate over and over again for a week? Be forced oh. to listen to a song you hate oh. over and over again for a week. Oh, that's called listening to the radio. Yeah, old fogey. <laughs> no, they like play the same five songs literally like every hour. I think it's true. I gotta go with the song. Nope, I go movie. The, because the movie's longer, so you have to watch it fewer amounts, f fewer numbers of times. The so songs are three minutes, three to four minutes, as opposed to like a two hour movie. You're like, you're like, Mo you have to listen to that thing hundreds of times more than you would have. But I will say though, being forced to watch a movie, actually forcing you to watch it, yep. you're impairing more of your senses, or you are impairing your sight. One of those two things. Fact. Which the oh. other, you're just impairing your hearing. Yeah. Where and even if it is where I don't have to listen to the movie, I just have to watch it. I'd still rather have my sight than I would my hearing for this set. 100% for this because purpose. again, going back to the driving exit, like going back to my assertion about the radio, on the radio yeah, I'm listening to the same, you know, but it song. Really bother okay. you. Yeah, because it's in the back. It's it's auditory. I'm you know tuning it out, whatever. But I'm still able to drive. I'm that's, still able to do other things. That's totally fair. And and I didn't realize that you could multitask while that was going on. I thought it was like a week dedicated to either listening or watching a movie. No, you definitely had a fair point about yeah. not. But getting... I totally agree. I totally agree. There you I go. Totally agree. Fifty-four, forty-six. Huh. There you go. Next, would you rather drink? Ha! Ah, hey, this is very pertinent to me in the impossible That's quiz. That's amazing. Oh. I I can answer this one personally. Oh. Would you rather drink a gallon of mustard? God, I'm, I'm having like flashbacks to the impossible quiz at this point. Drink a gallon of mustard in one sitting, or use mustard as toothpaste for three weeks. A gallon. A yeah. gallon. You had a spoonful. Let me tell you, a gallon. Good luck. It's it's not like I, I don't, don't care how able to do it. I don't care how big of a fan you are of mustard. It might take you three weeks of sitting in front of that gallon in order to get through it. I know. That's hard. A gallon is a ton. I would have to of go mustard. I would have to go red. I'm making all the unpopular tooth hygiene decisions today, I I but you have to go red. red. And then and then you follow exactly what I said. From the last question, where you pour in some baking soda, you rebrush, you do the scope. Vigorous and, flosser. And you floss vigorously, and you come out with beautiful teeth. Everyone says red, 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 yep. red, red. I agree with red. Here we go. 
5446. Closer than you think. It is closer than we think. Last one. Okay. Last one, because Jason has to talk with Verizon. Mm -hmm. That's why. It's all in, in, in an attempt to make sure that you guys are getting smooth streams every time. High definition streaming. Here we go. Would you rather, ooh, huh. Oh. Would you, oh, this is a hard one. This is a good one to end on. Would you rather be smart and unlucky or be dumb and really lucky? <laughs> ooh. That's me in a nutshell. Which one? Which one? Which one is me? I'm, I'm. I'm very unlucky. He's smart. He's smart. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is he? <laughs> um, you know this what? Is, this is interesting. You know what? I like. I like Jason. I, I want to be like Jason. I'd be Please smart don't. and unlucky. <laughs> Please don't be like Jason. Please don't. The world begs you. Don't. I be think. Like Jason. I think Jason's awesome. I'd rather be smart and then lucky. Why? I know. Why? I know. I know some of the people in the red category, and and you know what? If you're smart, you can get out of unlucky situations and make the most of them. I do feel though, people in the red category probably don't really care that they're in that red category. Like they probably feel good about their situation. I mean, I'd rather be smart and unlucky any day. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, speaking personally, I've always seen myself as like the guy who will work nonstop to create my own luck kind yeah, of thing. Where it's like, the odds. Yeah, yeah, I will overcome the odds. I will make sure that like I'm working as hard as possible. I'm, I'm studying, I'm training myself, I'm doing all this stuff um, in order to create my own opportunities rather than hope that they come to me or, you know, luck into them. There's a lot of argument that ignorance is bliss, man. It, Although see, most, most people are going see, blue. That's that's the thing, right? Like if you don't know, you just like kind of, so you're kind of clueless. Life just hands you a bunch of stuff. That's a pretty, like, I honestly, know. that's a pretty sweet life. Like, oh, hey, I won the lottery. Oh, that's cool. Or like, you know, I, it, I just feel like, Luck is powerful, and if you don't know any of it, like, great. Whereas if you're smart and unlucky, you're like, man, I should have gotten that job promotion because I deserved it more than that dumb guy, but he knows the boss's wife or whatever. You know, whatever. You know, like, he, he has connections or whatever. And so, like, if you're smart and the world is based on luck and it is unfair to you, it makes you miserable. Oh, this is really hard. It's a hard one. I yeah. So so I'm Unlucky. gonna I'm going to like I'm going to make the assumption here that that dumb and really lucky gets you up to like here. And smart and really unlucky still gets you to like better a you're better just, place you're in just life. Saying because you're just you, trying to convince yourself of that. Because you are you have the the like wherewithal to figure it out. Luck doesn't have to do with everything. Like there's a lot that luck doesn't play into. But if you're on, the, but okay, okay, okay. I know, and I know this is the last one. But if you are unlucky, you could you could attain up to here, but then you could lose it because you are unlucky. Like unrestricted. Hey, you created a, uh, a company, you won the lottery, whatever, or you say you're, okay, let's take it to the extreme. I'm smart. I figure out the, the pattern in the numbers so that I can win the lottery. Great, I won $18 million, but somehow I'm unlucky and I lose the ticket, or I, I'm unlucky and the government repossesses my house. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, unluckiness? Luck is very powerful. Luck is very... Yeah, I'm gonna stick it out. I'm just gonna stick it out on faith and say blue. Everyone says blue. Blue, 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 blue. No, there were a bunch of reds earlier. I'm seeing a lot of blue, though. Here we go. All right. Wow. 58%. I mean... It's really interesting. You know, it's interesting because be smart and unlucky means you're gonna have to work for it. 
Yeah. Like you are going to have to work for it. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a big thing. Whew. All right. All right. Wow. That so, was intense. That was great. I enjoyed this a lot. This yeah, was really was really fun. fun. And I enjoyed your guys' comments too. Like this was it was interesting we to see. We were all it. like on the same page for most. We, we for were some surprisingly. Of them, but it was, yeah, but it was it was really good. Stanley once said that lucky is. Shoot. Hold on. Uh, Where is it? it oh yeah. Here Stanley once said being lucky is the best superpower. Says uh, Rue keep Chopin online. Chopin. 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 Maybe it's Chopin. Chopin. <laughs> see a lot of red. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I don't believe in pure luck. Uh, Jenna Wright. So long and thanks for the fish. Good. Uh, all <laughs> Good right. reference. Right? Luck isn't real, says Yusuf. Mm. If you ain't smart, you would lose your channel. That's true. I would lose my channel. Yeah, there's there's no way of faking uh, your way through, uh, hey man, through game theory. Hey, man, you're just theory. really lucky. That's, right? You yeah. just come up with brilliant stuff out of luck. That was the K9 Torch. Yeah. Okay, so okay. that's... So that's it uh, for today. Thank you guys for engaging in this little like fun personality test. This was a lot of fun. I'd like to do this again sometime. Yeah, this was really neat. It, it was fun to debate these things and, and learn a little bit about each other. Oh, man. And about you guys. About my stinky laundry. Stink pat. Stank pat. <laughs> stank my, <laughs> my poor teeth brushing skills. Your, your my, tea my vigorous, burgling My tea habits. burgling, vigorous flossing. Your, your vigorous flossing. <laughs> Jason just being generally weird. Smart. Hi. Being smart being and smart unlucky. Being smart and unlucky. Uh, so there you go, guys. Thank you guys for joining us today. So that being said, uh, remember, that's just a stream. A live stream. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for, for... thank goodness, it's Scary Games Friday. T-G-I-S-G-F. Uh, the saga continues. The saga of Franbo continues. Yeah, cause... get ready. It is so scary. Grab like a big, grab like a, a, plush, a, big turkey a plushy pillow. animal to cuddle because it is scary stuff. Friendbo. And popcorn. Friendbo. Because that's always good. Friday night popcorn, I feel like you gotta go with that. I keep, every time I say Franbo, it reminds me of like uh, an old Western. Western. Yeah. Like Frambo, 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 Frambo. Sorry, anyway. Okay. But right. ladies, so we're gonna say goodbye to you now. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at four o'clock p.m. Pacific time for Frambo. Get ready to get scared. And in the meantime, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. So Alex bye. Dank Pat says Raz, thanks. Uh, uh Rooster, love you. Love you too, Rooster. <laughs> Hoy, I'm Needed Tim. Bye. Nano bye. the Wolf, live stream. Yes. Yes. Marina, bye. Uh Adrian X. Andrian X. Goodbye. <laughs>